Welcome to iThrive's new patient marketing series presented by iCarePro. I'm CEO of iCarePro, Daniel Rostin, and this series is supported by iDoc, Clear Vision Edge Pro, and iCarePro. We've got 75 to 80 staff here at iCarePro, and as I like to joke, we're probably the largest group of people in the world that spend all day every day doing optometry marketing in order to help our practice to succeed at online marketing. We need full-time designers, we need writers, we need web developers, programmers, SEO analysts, marketers, social media staff, you name it. Now, obviously, practices don't have those resources on staff, but that doesn't mean that there aren't many things that you can do to help yourself. Now, whether you use an outside company to do your marketing or whether you choose to do it yourself, the goal of this series is to share my experience with you from here at iCare Pro in helping over 2,000 practices with their online marketing and translating that into what you can do, what do you need to plan for, what do you need help with, what should you strategize over. So let's get started. Now, I always get a mixed reaction with this slide. Oh, come on. I thought this was going to be helpful. Now you're asking me, what is marketing? Well, I, seriously, let me ask you, how do you define marketing? Uh, well, Daniel, you know, you could do the old marketing is a set of things that you do, you know, some activities that you want to do to, to grow your business or to promote your business. So I'd say, yeah, all right, I could give you maybe a five out of 10 on that definition. Um, but if you actually go online and look for the definition of marketing, you will find tons of different definitions. In fact, my favorite is the webpage that touts the 72 different definitions of marketing. So it's not such a dumb question after all. Nobody really seems to agree on what marketing is. I say, who cares what everybody else thinks it is? If I'm going to do marketing, I want it to produce new patients for my practice. So I just call it new patient marketing. That way we're all clear. Okay, now we're not done yet though, of course, not by any stretch, but most every practice wants new patients. Although nowadays with some practices booked so far ahead, new patients are not the solution. The calendar is full for weeks. The solution is higher revenue patients, but hold on, we'll get there. I think that there is a better definition of patient marketing though. I think that marketing is actually a set of activities designed to solve a business need. Now, obviously, you're not marketing for the fun of it. You're trying to solve a business need. So I often start back to asking practices, so you need marketing? Yes, is the answer. We do. Well, what do you need? Oh, well, Daniel, we need, uh, I'll tell you what we need. Uh, we need better rankings on Google. We need to do more Facebook. What do you think of Instagram? Maybe TikTok, our website needs to be updated and so on down the list. Now, don't get me wrong. Those are all very, very important things to do. But maybe if I ask you a little bit differently, what is the business need that you are trying to get marketing to solve? Now, I'm gonna tell you why I'm asking because everything I just mentioned, like rankings and social and your website, there are literally unlimited things that can be done to them. So we need to focus our marketing activities on your business needs. Now. I'm gonna share with you my view of what typical business needs are. And I've noticed that as practices evolve, their business needs evolve and therefore the marketing that they should need should evolve as well as the practice grows. So let's start with what we call a stage one practice. From the moment a practice opens up, it really only has one goal for the first few years of its existence, fill the books, fill the books with patients. There are no recurring patients, not initially, of course, um, nobody to recall, just bring in the new patients. This can go on for two, three, five years in practice. Obviously the patient base starts to build up and as more and more patients come into the practice, you've got more and more returning patients every year. You're doing more recalls and less, less ratio of new patients. But for those first few years, if I asked you the question, what is the most important business need that your practice has? Everybody would answer the same, same thing. And they would say, I wanna get more patients, Daniel. And here's the kicker. If I were to say to you, what kind of patients are you looking for? Your answer would be any kind of patients. What's most important to us right now is we need a full schedule. We need to grow our revenue. We need to pay for our staff. We need to afford better equipment. We will take any kind of patient. Well, if that's the case, then here's the marketing strategy that I would prescribe for your practice. I'm gonna give you a second to look at all the images here, but you know, don't get too caught up in them. They're, they're just examples. So here's my point. Um, if you need new patients, any kind of patients, what's the right way to do your marketing? I can tell you what the wrong way is to do your marketing, even though you might actually have the best customer service in town and your practice is amazing and you offer really great eye care and everybody loves you. It's not going to help you market that. You can't market it. It means nothing to, to basically to everybody because every other practice says and thinks the same thing. So instead, what you really need to do is you need to segment your marketing. You need to segment your audience and start marketing to that segment. Now, your, com your community is actually full of a few dozen different types of eye care needs out there. You know that you've serviced them. So you have to connect with them and speak to their individual need, pull them in individually. Now, how do you do that? Well, I call it marching down the calendar and picking off a segment of the marketing every month. 
So July and August is back to school season. Okay, enough said. We all know what that is. Market the heck out of that segment. Come September, oh, problem seeing the board now that I'm in the classroom. Problems with reading. So you go after that segment of moms with your marketing. Glaucoma, diabetes, December is use it or lose it. January, let's target the contact lens wearers, et cetera. Now, my point here isn't that this exact schedule works for everybody, but my point is that the practice has a marketing schedule. You know your audience, you got to go out and get them now. So we'll talk about the actual strategies in other parts of this series, but for now, let's continue. Now, once a practice starts to get a good patient base going, we all know what happens. Every year, well, except when you weren't open during these months last year, every year you get a nice steady stream of returning patients. The books already look and start off reasonably full, of course, and uh, as you continue to make your marketing efforts to get new patients, but there comes a point where the practice hopefully should be pretty regularly booked up, right? If I were to ask you a question, the question, what business need does this stage two practice have now? The answer would still be, well, we need a full schedule of patients. But if I were to ask you, well, what kind of patients do you need? I don't think the answer would be the same as it was before. Yeah, just any kind of patients. At this point, no. At this point, you want the right kind of patients. I can feel the nodding out there. And what are the right kind of patients when you've already got a pretty full set of patient a book out there? Well, they're different for every practice, obviously, but they all share something in common. At this stage, the right kind of patient is almost always a high revenue patient. We want the right kind of patients. That's the business need that you have now. So if that's the case, tell me, does this look at all like the right kind of marketing strategy for a practice that is targeting the right kind of patients? Okay, obviously not at all. This is the strategy that we use for stage one. Now, I'm, I know I'm simplifying marketing right now, but that's okay. If you're trying to go after high revenue patients, there's a reason why they're high revenue. Usually the need they have requires a lot of expertise, training, equipment at your office, just to be able to offer the high revenue service. And if all is good, there aren't too many practices around there that offer that service. And most patients don't even usually know that this specialty exists, that it's a solution for them, or that you exist and that you offer that service. So the marketing challenge is obviously quite different. Now, here's what it might look like. Again, simplifying things to make the point. You have to focus your marketing on a quarterly message. I'll get into quarterly in a second, why quarterly, but there's obviously a lot that goes into each of these quarters. The main point though, is that your audience needs to learn a lot about each of these topics. One month and done is not enough. You need a good, let's say on your website, you need a good five to 10 pages of content on the website about each topic, not only for Google to send you relevant traffic, think SEO, but so that you can actually address all the questions that your potential patient might have. There's a lot they need to learn about this specialty service that you have. You need landing pages to help nurture them, nurture them through the process. Obviously, it's going to be a slower decision-making process as well on their end because it's more complex. It actually touches their eye health a lot more. It's more expensive. Now, you need more video explanations and patient testimonials as well. Your website structure has to change to favor your specialties. Basically, you're going to spend a lot more time educating via social media and everything else that you do, and you'll likely have to do some more referral work as well. So that's a pretty good reason why not every practice gets into specialties. There are a lot of work to be successful at. Some practices are actually quite happy staying at stage one. Now, my observation of the changes that are happening in the industry today are maybe that in order to remain relevant and successful in the coming years, practices should develop a specialty, I think, or two or three. In fact, stage two marketing is not for, just for the practice who wants the right kind of patients. It's also effective in transitioning you into becoming a specialty practice, moving from stage one to stage two. You know, if you market it, they will come. Now, if not, it's kind of hard to break into getting specialty patients if you don't try to attract them, obviously, aside from converting your own patients, of course. Now, want to guess what happens after stage two? Well, stage three, obviously, but where does a practice typically go from stage two? Many practices stop at stage two, of course, and a number of them can stop at stage one, no problem at all. But for those that continue to stage three, I present to you what I call the multi-doc, multi-location practice. Many practices, of course, can add more doctors at stage one or stage two or more locations at stage one or stage two, but their focus typically remains the same. And given all the acquisitions that are happening in the industry today, there are a lot more multi-doc and multi-location practices out there than ever before. So what does a three-location, five-doctor practice need or a 10-location, 15-doctor practice need or you name it? I think the answer is pretty simple. They need it all. They, they want, yes, we want more patients, lots more patients. We have five locations and many mouths to feed, you know, well, schedules to fill. And of course, when there are that many doctors, there are bound to be some that provide specialty high revenue services. So a stage three practice is far more complex and needs a lot 
of marketing in many areas, as you can see here on this slide, including regular content creation on many topics, Google ads, robust social media marketing, offline marketing, and more. So where does that leave you? That leaves you with a pretty good understanding of the fact that you, you have to know your practice well. You have to know what your goals are. I've often spoken to practices and you know, I, I describe stage one, stage two, and stage three. And some of them say, you know what, Daniel? I'm in the middle of stage one and stage two. I say, it's great. Let's start with stage one marketing, make sure the books are full. And then you should shift into stage two marketing to help bring the practice into high revenue services. So you've got to know where you're heading and you've got to know that your marketing can take you there. Now, there are some practices that are do-it-yourself, DIY. And there are some practices that are don't do-it-yourself, so if you're a DIY practice, then this webinar series is for you as we're gonna get into some great ways to market your practice. If you're a DDIY, chances are you're either gonna do no marketing or maybe this webinar will con convince you to do marketing or you will hire a company to do it for you. Now, if you do, this series is gonna give you a lot of ideas of what to expect from the company you work with, what you should be looking for, what strategy, what you should be thinking, um, no matter who you work with. So now it shouldn't surprise you to know that this is exactly how iCare Pro went about constructing our services. So OD site, as you can see here in the slide, is for practices who are do-it-yourself. They, they have a website. The rest, they can do themselves, or maybe they're not yet ready for marketing. Then we built OD Essentials to be the exact marketing service that a stage one practice needs. What kind of patients do you need? Any kind of patient. OD Capture and OD Specialty, those are stage two marketing services. They're designed for the right kind of patient. You know what OD specialty is and OD captures for a practice that generates a lot of revenue from their optical or contact lens sales. And then of course we have OD Metro for the multi-doc, multi-location practice that needs it all or simply for the large practice that needs it all. Now I couldn't help but quote Sun Tzu here in the summary because the first point you have to reach in determining what your marketing is knowing thyself. You've got to know what kind of practice you are. That would be what stage of growth you're at and what are your new patient goals? Now, any kind of patient, the right kind of patient, we want it all. You really have to know what the practice needs. Then you're going to have to target your marketing at somebody. You're going to have to segment the market. You cannot be a great optometrist in a great practice and have great service and expect that to get any attention. You must segment the market. Any kind of patient means you should choose a dozen segments of the market and target one a month. The right kind of patient means that you should stay focused on one segment for much longer to make sure you reach them. They're harder to reach, harder to educate, and you've got to educate them. And as the industry shifts, I think marketing becomes a critical to a practice's success. So you have to decide, am I a do-it-yourself or am I a don't-do-it-yourself? There is no try. I um, snuck in a little Yoda quote in there for you. So with that said, up next, we have part two, unlocking your social media potential. Now we're going to dive into social media and answer the troublesome question of what platform should I really be paying attention to? There are so many out there. And then of course, the big question, how do I create and maintain an effective social media posting schedule that really gets me somewhere? So with that said, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you online.